Today we're using the TB03 and it's all about making your best driving baseline. That's today's video. Are you ready for it? Let's go and do it right now. Hey, what's up? I'm Analog Kitchen and thank you for checking out yet another video. Now, if this is your first time here, don't hesitate to click subscribe and hit that notification bell. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and you won't miss out on anything. The TB303 is a legendary bass synthesizer, famous for its distinctive sound and its role in electronic dance music. Originally made by Roland in the early 80s, it didn't really gain that much popularity until it got used by namely one person, DJ Pierre, who pushed it into the realm of electronic dance music as he used it, but not for what it was intended to be used for. The Trio Tree's unique squalshy and resonant sound is a direct result of the way the filter and the oscillator are designed. And what makes it a really rare instrument is because yeah, it just failed. Roland made it and nobody seemed to like it. So there's not a lot of them made and that makes it unique. And that's also why a lot of companies have made replicas. There's so many different 303s out there. There are differences between the 303 and the TB03 because the original 303 is an analog machine, analog circuitry. The TB303 is an emulation. It's the ACB business, analog circuit behavior. This is what Roland calls it. Now, I for the love of God don't know why they didn't just like make a new 303 because I think the technology is there to make it if you made all these classical machines. But anyway, I don't like all the reissue boxes that Roland have done, but the TB03 does a few things that the 303 can't do. For instance, the programming is a lot easier. It's not the most easy machine to program, which was also a letdown for a lot of people that bought an initial 303. And there's effects on board. That's really cool. Now, in terms of sound, obviously the purists are going to debate that the original 303 has a warmer character and it sounds a lot more smooth and buttery and all those terms that people like to use when emotion gets involved in the whole situation. But I think it serves a purpose. There's different elements and different loves and hates with different machines. And I love to use my TB03 just because there's a few things that the 303 didn't do. And I love it. There's a different sweet spot. I do think the filters do sound different, but um, you can get to that place fast. And obviously it's easy when you get a 303, everybody's just using it acid, 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 wah, 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 squelch it up and you know, quirky and crazy, which is cool. But in the end of the day, can you set your baseline in such a way that it just drives the groove? Now, the way I use it is, I glue the different sounds that I have and the different synths that I use, I glue it together. The 303 is really that machine. Looking at frequency spectrum, it just flies all over the place. What other machine do you know that just jumps about in the frequency spectrum the way this machine does? I mean, you've got low notes that you feel, you've got mid notes that you think that are there, that's just like ghost notes almost, because of the filter, because of the glides and because of the accents, you can really do something crazy. So sounds you feel, sounds that might be there or are not there, and then sounds you hear. What other synthesizer could do that? Try and make ghost notes on a sub 37. You'll have a field day. But then again, I use it as a drive. And I try to stay away from the DJ Pierre future kind of vibe, you know what I mean? Because that is something that we know and it's really, really cool, but it was cool then. And you would like to modern it up a little bit. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to use the TB03. I'm going to just make a baseline and just like place it on top of my music. All right, so we got the TB03 here. Um, very smaller setup as I have my Octotrack here, the TB03 here. I've got a MIDI fighter. I've got, of course, the... Um, Red Rockets 008 here with the 006 here, and then there's a black box here. Now, the way I've set it up is the drums are coming from the Octatrack, and then the Octatrack is getting a clock from the 008. Uh, the black box is getting a clock from the um, Octatrack, and the TBO3 is getting a clock from the black box. So, initially, 
hitting this green button here will start the whole shebang, right? So, as you can hear. Now, um, the way I'm going to set it up is I'm going to uh, do this the way I like to do it on the TB03. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go to bank two, because I've got, on, on the, there's two banks. Uh, respectively of eight patterns so there's 16 patterns you can chain patterns together also but the way i'm using it is i'm going to clear this uh, pattern so i'm going to hold it and clear it so there's nothing there now and then i'm going to find my root node now the root node that i have is going to correspond with the track that i have now i've got like bank one two three or abc and that is on the my uh, Tenton Music Black Box track one, track two, track three. So the sounds that we have um, are stuff is stuff that I have created ahead of time. So I will bring a synthesizer or bring the MS20 and play stuff live over the top. But the songs and the song structure is already laid out. Now a brief explanation how that works is if I got my drums here. Track seven is always going to be my bass line in this case, right? And I've got two patterns, because the first bass line is always going to play um, the first root note, like so. So now I know that that is the key, so my TBO3 needs to go there, right? So we know that. And then, meaning I've got a arpeggio, that corresponds with, right? Very simple. Some atmosphere as well. So we've got something here. Nice, decent progressive house. No crazy stuff. We get to that later. Now, this is all stuff that you add to it. This is the basin that I need in my groove, but I want something to really drive my, propel my beat forward, right? So I'm going to take this bass line away, and this is already running, so I'm going to put it in right mode. You see the steps here. Now, toggling through the steps, I can go all the way up to 16. Um, when I hold this little button here, I can just tell it to say, like, now go to whatever I want. Yeah, so uh, a more popular setting is 3. You get a polymeter, or 5 is what people use, 6 also. And you'll, it'll make sense when you when you hear it. So let's stick it on. 16 notes for now, right? And let's start adding notes in. We're gonna, if we put this in pitch mode, now all of a sudden this thing becomes a keyboard, as you can see. Two black notes, three black notes, and the white notes right here, so. There it goes. So I'm going to stick all the notes in. I think it's this, it's this. There you go. So, I know now that it's a G. The track is in G. The tuning is just regular. Cool. Now, now it's over a course of the 16 steps. Every step has a note. And what we would like to do is create that crazy 303 kind of vibe, but we don't want to go too um, crazy in there. But let's first play around with the filters. This is what everybody knows. Classic 303 stuff. So far, nothing's out of the ordinary. This is pretty much what the original 303 also can do. Cut off frequency, resonance, envelope modulation, and then there's a decay and then an accent, obviously. And all these things I can place on the different steps. Now, the, I love programming this thing because it's better than the original. That was just very hard to program. But at the same time, um, it's still a bit of a, you know, you have to figure out what, what, what's happening. So if I'm going to look at my drums, this is very important. The best baseline for me is to do with groove and propelling my groove forward. So, so I've got congas here and a little bit of a tambourine. So it'd be cool if I could get some sort of a call and response thing going from my TBO3. So what I'm going to do is with my transpose buttons here, I'm going to start on step one, say, open it up a little so I can hear what's happening. Let's make the first one a little bit higher, right? So I'm going to go up one octave, two octave, 
starts blinking, three octaves starts blinking faster. So, blink, blink, blink. So. And that's the first one. To make sure that I'm on my groove, I'm going to stop it and... So, there we go. Uh, so, that's... Going to give it a little bit more volume, so we can hear it. Okay, so the first step is up. What I also am going to do to make it interesting already is every other step I'm going to place an accent. Let's start with doing that. So, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 14, 16, nothing happens, but when I open this up, so now also you get a counter rhythm, this is what I really love about the TV3, see it? So now I'm going to start to think, okay, I need to take a few of those accents out at certain spots, maybe step 6 I can take it out. And then 12 again also. That's what the groove is doing now. Instantly a groove going, right? Now I will go back to my notes and start fiddling about with which notes I can play. Let's listen to what is here. So that's tu, 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 tu. So I know that I can also play around with this A sharp here, right? So let's see if we can do something crazy with that Step 4 maybe There you go Instantly something starts to metabolize here So that's step 4 and I know that 8 can also be that, but then instead of going here, and mind you, if you hit the note, it's going to advance. So go back. I'm going to make this a lot higher. And because I want to have a glide, I'll go to 8 and I'll say slide. Let's listen to the atmosphere. Now what I also love about this TBO3 is that it has effects on it. Now it starts to become a different machine because the original 303 did not have that. So there's overdrive, then there's delay or reverb. When you go into the menu, um, you can just like change up the, the, uh, the effects that you would like to use and I... Uh, okay. Da, da, da. So this note's also in there, I hear. So there's a G, there's an A, and there's an A sharp. So I can go in, because I, I hear it in the atmosphere. You hear it go up here. Uh, and then it goes to... Uh, uh, this is the note, this one. So let's add that one too. So that's... Da, da, Ta, 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 ta. So, I'm going to go so randomly select a higher note. There you go. I'm, lo I'm loving that. Now I want to tie a little bit more notes together so that it doesn't really play that whole thing the whole time. So I'm thinking, the last step, I'm going to put a slide on there. And maybe on my first step as well. There's two waveforms, by the way, that I didn't talk about. One is a little bit more bassy. That is your uh, basic square wave. Then that saw obviously does a different vibe altogether, right? 
Shall we see how this bass line is going to work with this bass line? <laughs> yeah, I'm getting it. Goosebumps, goosebumps, good. If I'm getting goosebumps, it means something's happening. Okay, still not too much happening on the drums, but you just can hear how this thing starts to become something. The resin is fully open, let's tone it down a little bit and smooth out what we're doing, right? Add a little bit of delay. What I love about the overdrive is that if I need to add a little bit more adrenaline, I can easily now make it that from a bass kind of sound, you know what I mean? Cool. Well, we're not there yet. Let's keep it down. And some drums in. I'm loving up. Yeah. Cool. So it sits where it sits. There are three octaves, obviously. I'm using uh, the middle one. Now there's bass, a lot of bass. Let's take out uh, those two. And let's listen to what happens if I play those bass notes together. Not ideal. What I love about it is that fairly easy, easily you can get to a different sound, to a different vibe, to a different flow, right? So what you need, if you're gonna play two bass lines together or two bass notes together, one needs to stay very consistent. I'm using an FM uh, type bass. Uh, look it up if you don't know what it is. It, basically, a little bit more of a glassy, uh, not so analog sounding um, sound for my bass, which is very progressive house, by the way. If you were to listen to the, the bass sound in solo, Very pro house. Uh, I can't explain why, but that you will always hear it. And what I think you should take away from this video is also to mind map yourself into trying to pinpoint where the sounds are coming from. Can I, when I'm producing, still follow the sounds where they are? And that's very important because this is all very steady and very sparse. And uh, I want it to be that way. Boom, da, boom, da, boom. The congas or the percussion that I have, that's the most groovy stuff that's happening right here, right? But still, it's uh, everything starting on the one, two, three, four. So the only little bit of variation that I have is going to be my catalyst, the catalyst. Somebody was asking me, what is the catalyst? And the catalyst is the way um, this propels the beat forward almost, right? So, I mean, back in the days, we didn't even have another bass line. It was just this. See, this, this works perfectly well as a bass line. But the trick is, from the minute you start to introduce resonance, you're going to use low end, right? So you always need to be careful, like what is the balance in between the filters here? And if you have multiple uh, low um, frequency content uh, information uh, stuff, uh, that's not even a sentence, but if you've got a lot of stuff happening in the low end, try either overdrive or resonance. See? So listen, now it's in, now it's in the bass line. You hear clearly that they're fighting. Boom, I spent on the, boom, on the first slide, it's really fighting. And then with the resonance. See, there it is. It just all of a sudden appears. And that is what we call a crossover point. A crossover point meaning the frequencies are masking right now, which is cool sometimes, but speakers don't like it generally. So you have to find a different spot. If that doesn't work, crush it. Yeah. 
See, so different uh, timbres, but still, I'm using it more as a solo instrument, right? I can even go higher. So this is the uh, main pitch, of the main uh, level, and then this is really up into uh, space. And I use this when I play live, but I do it when I'm starting to add a lot of stuff together. So. This is perfectly well for what is this right now. Let's take out the um, delay because it's going to dis distract you, distract us. Okay, so follow along. Now, if I was to add my, which I'm going to turn up a little bit because I think it's a little bit on the soft side. So now there's different things happening, right? You've got your bass line and bum, 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 Then you've got a little bit of a countermeasure. So that's why I wanted the glide on of one with the TBO3. And the high note. So everything now seems to work together. That's driving the beat. That's how I. Call. That's why I call it a, a catalyst. Am I done with this bass line? Not yet. I'm going to take this out. That little arpeggio thingy that we had playing from the black box that I just turned up. And I'm going to turn that bass line off as well. Because, um, yeah, there is a hierarchy. Obviously there is. But you have to decide what it is that you would like to do. I can say, this trumps everything. So now I'm using this more as a percussive element. So as you can hear, the high note's gone. And I'm focusing more on this FM bass right here. And this is what I need to always keep in mind because you cannot just like, you know, keep pushing levels up, 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 up. It doesn't work that way. You have to be really careful on where you go. But when you're performing, you're cautious anyway. Nothing's in a rush, you know. You need to just like, okay, what's my next move? Now I'm going to add more music in, right? So the atmosphere. Let me just start on the one. I have to keep in mind where my little index is going. Three, four, and bum. Because if, I, if you start different samples on different measures, hmm, crazy. Now, this thing is moving on a 16. Um, Bit grid. I told you about polymeters, right? So what if we were to say like, okay, we want this thing to just like do something weird. I'm going to go in, I press this, it says 16. Let's go to 5. Hey, all of a sudden. Now you can get some randomness in terms of when certain notes are falling. Uh, still predictable, but on a different grid. So you get a five beat structure in a four beat grid, right? You can do three, that's also very popular. A lot of people uh, did three. Very hard floor alike, if you know the band Hard Floor. And this makes it even more hypnotic, right? But it's very busy, so I tend to just go for And do you hear that it's already it's doing the same pattern, but it's running on a different measure now because obviously I've fiddled about with placing it within the groove. Now it's back to where I wanted to go. So I'm going to stick on the 16, but that's how you do it. Then I'm thinking, okay, let's play a different bass line here on pattern two. Ooh. Nice. Cool. Okay, let's see what we have right here. I think we've got something going here. Woo. Do you 
you see how this this 303 is driving the the, 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 the whole group forward. Arpeggio. What's not the light here, right? I'm getting goosebumps all the way. <laughs> Okay, back to this. A little bit of a piano line so we can go to the straight bass line. Shall we do the same thing and play our little thingy? So we're going to make a transition to the second bass line that has the more melodic vibe. And now I'm going to octave my 303 up, right? Bam, it's gonna go. One, two, three. That's something that you should never do, which is hitting the stop button. One, two, three, oh! No! Okay, and that happens. Did you get a crash? That never happened to me before. And that's a crash for the Octatrack. Can you believe it? It's absolutely crashed. It's just crashed, it just froze. No, okay. Let's hope that that doesn't happen during the show. But um, yeah, okay, well that concludes our video, I guess. Whoa, in the middle, it was given. I see the goosebumps, it was the goosebumps. The goosebumps really um, got it. Yeah, that can happen, sometimes it happens. I don't know why it happens, but it, it, it does. I mean, this is unique though. It doesn't happen often, but sometimes stuff happens and then stuff crashes. So, but uh, let me know what you think of the track, by the way. Um, yeah, that's how I do this. A thing with the 303, liking that. Let's see what's happening now. Yeah, and then acting like nothing's uh, happening. So, uh, yeah, okay, go back into quick mute mode again, you know, and start the track up. And uh, let's do a little wrap up, right? Let's do a little wrap up of how we should uh, or could look at, at this thing. So, I'm starting the track. The 303, I've already programmed it, then I will lower it a little bit. I'll play it. Cool. Now I know that it's cool, so I've done it during um, uh, sound check, obviously. So when I'm starting with this track, I will probably start with uh, everything off, knowing that if I'm going to start this now, this is not engaged, the Tentum Black Box. There's nothing playing on the Octa track, as you can see that all eight tracks are muted, or all seven tracks was eight. You can't turn that on and off, you cannot, as it is the master track. You know, it says master track, so that's nothing there. So if I'm going to start it now, only the 303 is going to start. And then I use this as a means to get the crowd engaged. Uh, maybe I have to follow somebody that play really, really uh, uh, high up, high pitch, high energy. So the 303 is also a very cool sort of like vibe track starter, right? <laughs> So the accent is another thing. Listen to that tape delay kind of vibe, right? Let's open up a little bit. Listen to what happens when I'm fiddling about with the delay time. Weird, right? Alien sounds. Now we're going to start adding a little bit of... Adding a little bit of the accent that we just played. Take it out of right mode because I don't want to be hitting the notes and just altering what I just made. Toning down the delay a little bit. Everything's running. That's cool. Cool. Start with a little bit of arp here.
I can even do an ambient thing. This could be uh, easily uh, one of the tracks that um, Slim Pickens would be making, I think, with just uh, with no beats in it. Let me know, Slim, if there's something that you would like. Reaching out to the patrons out there. Are you ready to uh, go for the baseline, guys? Here we go. Sorry, it's a tune. It's a tune. I don't care what anyone says. It's a tune. Sometimes you just hit one of those tunes where you think like, okay, yeah, and this is it. Hey, um, yeah, that is the TV 303. I mean, there's a lot that you can say about it. There's a lot that people know about it. And obviously it's just, it's one of those things, right? I mean, um, it's one of the synthesizers that I really liked. I really loved it. I really have loved it like forever. Um, and I had, what of a love-hate relationship with it because you know sometimes there's peaks where everybody uses it and then there's uh, thoughts where nobody uses it and that happened to me as well sometimes you want to just like play around with it and it was all cool and sometimes you just didn't but um, I found a spot for it on my sound where it sits neatly and does what it needs to do so yeah let me know how you use your uh, 303 or emulation let me know which kind you have um, a lot of people definitely um, go crazy over the fact that the original is the original but the original is so expensive uh, nowadays as everything Roland and rare you know it gets very expensive so if you can justify the cost then it's cool to just have one and own one but if you really cannot then the TV 3 and um, the Behringer are <coughs> did I say <coughs> sorry but <coughs> But um, other brands make uh, different uh, accessible and affordable machines as well. Now, this concludes our broadcast day. At the moment, uh, as I have recorded this earlier, as you might know, I am preparing to go to this Kitchen Club gig. So if you're in the vicinity here you're watching this, in a few hours I'm up. I'm going to be up in maybe uh, four hours from now, I'm playing at three. So uh, I'll pop in the chat uh, briefly, uh, but I'm running around with Sarah Summers, with Sign Saw, with Tough Chunks, with DJ Silly, with Lance Hop. It's going to be an awesome night. We're at the club Atelier tonight, where the first ever Synthology event is going to take place. Am I nervous? No. Am I lying? Probably. Okay, I'll catch you next week on another video. I'm Animal Kitchen and I'm signing off. Peace. <laughs>